Hey there, comic colleagues and superhero supporters. What if I told you that Spider-Man joined the Fantastic Four, subsequently making them the Fantastic Five? What if I also told you that because of this, Sue Storm, the Invisible Girl, leaves the team to become a fish person and form a romantic relationship with Namor, the Submariner? Interested? Let me tell you about it. What if Spider-Man joined the Fantastic Four, written by Roy Thomas and illustrated by Jim Craig, Pablos Marcus, and Janice Cohen, is an alternate retelling of Spider-Man's initial encounter with the Fantastic Four? We begin this captivating comic with Peter Parker, who has recently become the spectacular Spider-Man, contemplating on how he can make some extra cash. After some deep thought, Spider-Man concludes that he should apply to become a part of the Fantastic Four. In order to show that he's the perfect candidate, he breaks into the Baxter building and battles the Fantastic Foes one by one. After a brief scuffle, the heroes calm down and have a cordial conversation. When Spider-Man inquires about payment, we learn that the Fantastic Four is actually a non-profit organization. Hearing this, Spider-Man decides to make his exit, but with quick thinking from Sue Storm, the heroes come to a compromise for payment. After a quick press release and some interference from J. Jonah Jameson, Spider-Man joins Marvel's first family, now making them the Fantastic Five. As the Fantastic Five, the team begins to go on adventures and face their first villains. We see that the five heroes work together with max efficiency as they take down the Vulture with ease. Everything is going perfectly until one day when Mr. Fantastic creates a lunar rocket that allows the team to traverse space using limitless energy. Reed began creating this cosmic contraption when the team was the Fantastic Four, meaning that the rocket only seats four. So Mr. Fantastic, the Thing, the Human Torch, and Spider-Man blast off into the void while the Invisible Girl is left at the Baxter Tower with jealousy clouding her mind. As the team fends off the Red Ghost and his band of super gorillas in deep space, the Invisible Girl is called psychically by Namor, the Submariner, to meet him. Although Sue Storm has continuously professed her love for Reed Richards, she has always had a strange fascination with the seafaring figurehead. Because of this, she goes to meet with the Submariner. However, when she arrives, she realizes that it's a trap concocted by the Puppet Master. Under the Master's mind control, Namor kidnaps the Invisible Girl and takes her to his kingdom as his prisoner. Meanwhile, the team returns to the Baxter Tower and are surprised to find that Sue is nowhere to be found. The four friends search high and low for their lost member, when suddenly the Submariner appears as a hologram challenging the Fantastic Fellows to invade his undersea realm and rescue their fallen comrade. The squad springs into action to confront Namor, only to fall into another one of his deadly traps. As the team dives deep down to the ocean floor, they are captured by a giant scavenger clam and knocked unconscious. When our heroes awaken, they are greeted by Namor. He reveals that he has the invisible girl trapped in an aquarium with a giant octopus and the only way to save her is if they can defeat him in mortal combat. One by one, the team struggles to defeat Namor due to his cunning trickery. Since he set up this whole arrangement, he was able to stash weapons around the battlefield that countered the abilities of the Fantastic Four. However, Namor did not account for the combined might of Mr. Fantastic and Spider-Man. As the tables turn for the Submariner, the Thing is able to free the invisible damsel in distress from the aquatic prison and dispose of the giant octopus. This angers the Puppet Master, forcing him to play his trump card. Using his ability to control people, he commands the Submariner to release a gas that no living thing can possibly withstand. However, due to his love of Sue Storm, Namor is unable to release the gas and fights back against the Puppet Master's mind control. At the very same time, the giant octopus from earlier crashes through the Puppet Master's submarine and attacks him, taking him out of the conflict completely. Now that Namor is free of his mind control and the Puppet Master is out of the picture, all is well. Or is it? Tensions continue to rise between Mr. Fantastic and Namor as they fight for the heart of the Invisible Girl. That is, until Sue Storm herself breaks up the fight. She concludes that she loves both men but due to her not feeling needed on the Fantastic Five team, she ultimately decides to stay with Namor. Mr. Fantastic, along with the rest of the team, are shocked by her decision, but eventually come to terms and accept her decision. The story concludes with Sue Storm becoming an underwater breathing Atlantean and parting ways with her team, 
leaving Spider-Man to question if him joining the team was the cause of all of this. Well, there you have it. Spider-Man joins the Fantastic Four, Namor goes insane, and Sue Storm becomes a mermaid. How do you feel about the ending? Do you think Sue should have stayed with the team? Do you think Spider-Man was better off on his own, or do you think he'd be a great addition to Marvel's first family? Let me know what you think down in the comments. If you like this video, make sure to give it a like, comment, and follow for more comic coverage.